Hi, everybody, and welcome to Chesapeake Chats on the Hallmarkies podcast. We're so glad you joined us today. The gang's all here as we talk about the season finale, season six finale, not only the season finale, but the series finale. Oh, my gosh. It is over. Chesapeake Shores is over. And what do you what do you feel about that? You know, I feel like the last two seasons were so good. I got like back into like loving the show and like caring about the characters so much. Um, so it, it feels um, it feels bittersweet. I think that the show got better again, and you know, we got some you know some things tied up and some good storylines um, the last two seasons. And um, you know, I'm pleased with the finale, like what they did. So it's. It's a bittersweet, um, you know, ending, um, but I think they, they did a good job with it. Yeah. Casey, yeah. what about you? I agree. I got misty eyed. I'm not going to lie. I was like, am I getting misty eyed over Chesapeake Shores? Oh, I sure am. <laughs> what is happening? 2018 Casey would be like, what? But yeah, I agree. I, it was a beautiful tie up. There were so many things that needed to be wrapped up and I love how everybody was put in a good place. Even if we didn't know the outcomes of different things, everybody is in a good place right now. Mm -hmm. I still want more you guys hallmark. Cause I know you listen to us. We want more in some way or fashion. I mean, sign sealed went from a TV series to movie series, just saying. So I, I, I really wanted more. And I really felt like these last two seasons really let the actors shine. Mm -hmm. I think that it really showcased their abilities. And I had been saying that for years. I, I've said, this has been a stellar cast. Right. I just felt like they were suppressed in a lot of different ways. Right. And these last two seasons specifically, I feel like they, the writing has showcased their abilities and they've really shown into a, a little bit more with a specific character and actor that I'm thinking of with this last episode in particular I'd appreciate that like it was it was a very satisfying ending very sad very very misty I it was right like, oh. well I kind of feel I feel the exact same way that you guys did I think that this episode specifically being the last one really struck the right chord for me it was it was tender it was everyone has this they're happily ever after and in different ways but at the same time we want more because these happily ever afters are just the beginning of a new chapter for so for maybe all of the characters. Yeah. So we, of course we want more, but to end it this way is really, really what I was hoping for. Cause I want a happy ending, mm -hmm. you know, like I want that happily ever after for everybody. That's why I like Hallmark <laughs> so much. <laughs> that's why I'm a fan <laughs> <laughs> that's right isn't that why we all love Hallmark because yes. we know what we're investing in a happy ending which is what we mm -hmm. want to see because yeah. the world everything's crazy and unpredictable so right. it's nice to get you know and the O'Briens have been crazy, have been unpredictable. They have gone, you know, the highs and lows and you just see them entering this new era mm -hmm. um this they gave us so much family togetherness in this episode. Again, we'll we'll get to that. But um, before we jump into this episode specifically, okay, last recap. When we um, talked about episodes eight and nine, Casey and I were kind of wondering and curious about the show titles. Why did they title these shows the way they did? And we knew these writers, they're, they're creative, they're thoughtful men. And so we were like, okay, there's, there's got to be a story about this. And Casey actually got some answers for us. I did. Our friend Mark, you may know him as Mark Legan, who is one of the showrunners of this show, <laughs> reached out and shared that the titles are found in the great american song book so you can google every title and find the classic song and for those of you who don't know fief and mark you should go back and listen to our interviews with them from last year or last year earlier this year time's relevant oh. but sometime in the past um and you'll know that they're also um classic movie lovers as well so this also kind of ties into their personalities i feel like but i put together a little spotify playlist um 
called Chessie season six, and I will share it in the show notes for y'all. Um, but the best is yet to come, which was episode one. That is by Frank Sinatra. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we have Sinatra, we've got Dean Martin, Cole Porter, Etta, J- uh, Etta Jones, Nat King Cole, um, Ella Fitzgerald. So see, lots of good. I knew it. I knew there was a story there that just tied in their love for the old, old films and the classics. And uh, this is, it's got to be a great playlist. Now that you name all those names, I'm going to have to put that on. It is a good playlist. I, um, I put it on for a little bit. I was like, oh yeah, this song. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. I'm, I'm terrible at putting songs with their titles. Right. And then songs with their singers. I just, I know I just like the song and then I hear it and then I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. So anyways, thanks for the fun tidbit, Mark. (laughs) Yes. Thanks. Thanks for that. We really appreciate it. Like she said, we'll, we'll put the Spotify playlist on um, the information here, at least on under the YouTube channel, hopefully under iTunes as well. Um, Casey, what else were you going to say about, you mentioned something about Kevin's, um, Mm. Kevin's oh, backstory. Kevin's backstory. We had questions about Kevin's backstory too last episode. Because it and wasn't so, a surprise to us that he was going to med school. We were like, didn't he go to med school? Yes. So um, again, Mark says that even though they didn't have anything to do with the early stories, Kevin's backstory was that he was a pre-med, but then dropped out to join the army. Yes. So okay. he got the training as a medic. So totally different than going to med school which he was is different medic training mm-hmm. um back home became an ent emt okay. and now wants to go back to med school to become a doctor so great yes so it's it's there in the recesses of chesapeake shores <laughs> the history of kevin o'brien <laughs> it takes a village <laughs> it does take a village to um, remember all these details and everything like that so Thank you. Thank you for clearing some of that stuff up. Okay. Okay. Let's jump into this episode, episode 10. This one is called All or Nothing at All. And um, man, every scene was so important. Every word was so important. Every conversation, I was like, this is the last, (laughs) the last conversation. Like, what are they saying? I've got to pay attention. Loved it. Loved how it started out. And what did you think of they're rushed. They rush to the hospital, pick right back up where they belong. What did I, you- even, I was just like, oh no. I was <laughs> like, Sarah's going to have this baby in the ambulance. And then she did. And, you know, he <laughs> had to deliver his own baby, which, you know, good thing, you know, good thing she has a paramedic husband. She could just call and be like, hey, I got to go to the hospital now. And they still couldn't even make it uh, that far. I liked it you know we got right into the you know having the baby um you know immediately and then you know Mick and Megan like you know going from their dinner with this exciting news they have and rushing you know to see meet their grandbaby I thought it was a great way to start it um I I um I was like this ring thing I was like this is just not I was like, someone's going to choke on this ring. Like, <laughs> it's like when it's in like a drink, like at least you have it, you know, you can maybe see it, you know, but when it's like a custard, like a pudding, I was just like, oh. <laughs> that was so funny. And sure enough, I know, sure enough someone did choke. Yeah, someone's <laughs> like chipping their tooth on their <laughs> teeth. That's right. That's right. So I, I loved it too. I loved that they, when they were in the, hospital room and um everyone's trying to be quiet for the baby and they were like should we share our news and they wanted to get so excited but they couldn't because the baby was sleeping and (laughs) I thought that was just a real comical scene that was that was really fun yeah so (laughs) fun yeah uh she had that baby fast though man for her first oh my gosh (laughs) just shut up shut up (laughs) I mean, it must. Think- I'm like, how far was she, do they live from the hospital? I'm like, it could have been like, how long was that? Yeah, she 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 was like, oh, you know what? I got this laboring at home. She's probably like, I'm laboring at home. Yes, hours. <laughs> I think I think for sure she's a tough fire woman and turned like lieutenant or chief. I kind of forget her title. Sorry, but she's the boss, and she's she's got a high pain tolerance. I yeah. would guess. 
I mean, yeah, lady. she must. Mm-hmm. Tough lady. Go, Sarah. <laughs> so good. Um, what do we think of baby Mick? So, so sweet. So let me just clarify from a couple episodes. We said that this baby was the first grandchild. We were recording really late. So we forgot Carrie and Caitlin are also of this clan. We meant grand. We meant grandson. Grandson. Yes. Yes. Grandson. Grandson. You know, I had a feeling they were going to name that baby Mick. No. See, that totally surprised me. Really? I was yeah. surprised too. I was like, oh my gosh. I was like, okay. Yeah. I, I think it was just the, it's like, it's the final <laughs> season. It's the finale. So that's where my brain went. As soon as they said, uh, they said it was a boy, I immediately thought they're going to name this baby Mick. Well, I think it was very fitting. I thought it was really sweet. You know, mm-hmm. they really honored Mick as the patriarch. Um, but I was so geared up for one of those Irish names that he was talking about, you know, Finnan or <sighs> Brogan or something, but um, they definitely chose Mick. Okay. One other funny thing that I think about the hospital scene, what was this compilation of O'Brien's in this hospital room? It was Mick, Megan, Brie, Connor, sure. David? (laughs) I did think that was, that was a little odd. I will say, I, I did find that a little odd only because like, I think it would be, I mean, I'm not super close to either of my brother-in-laws, but I don't know. (laughs) It was already weird enough when I was, when I had my infant and my sister-in-law and her husband came in and I'm like, (laughs) exposed. exposed. Yeah. So, I mean, like, you know, but I mean, TV magic, I wish I looked as good as Sarah when I gave birth. (laughs) It's fine. It's fine. So if I looked like that, it wouldn't bother me. But it was funny because I was looking. I was looking around the room, and I'm like, "Where's Jess? Yeah, where's Abby? You yeah. know, like Jess and Abby weren't there. I just thought that was so funny. But then they like cut right to a scene where Jess and Abby are in the kitchen talking to Mick and Megan about their engagement. You know, and it's like this cute, um, you know, family rage. Jess is going to give them the family rate, and I, I just thought that was so funny. I don't know if there's any explanation for why the girls weren't there or, or if it doesn't just, it just doesn't matter, but it just struck, struck my funny bone. <laughs> uh, and then right after that scene, does it, don't we jump to Jess and David? Or no, we jump to Connor and Margaret. That's See, fine. I don't, okay, you guys. <laughs> Okay, here's what was in my head. Obviously, we know something. And I, in my head, I think that Abby and Jess aren't there because Jess is having a freak out moment talk with Abby about things that we find out (laughs) later. It's off screen. It's in my head. It's scripted. That's why they weren't there. And Jess is saying, here, we're we're just going to make this up because it's the last season. I mean, it's fine. So Jess shoves David out. She needs she needs time alone with Abby. And she's like, here, David, you go see my sister. I got to talk to my sister. What about? I don't uh, just go. Bye. Bye. <laughs> and David's like, OK, I guess I'll represent both me and Jess at the hospital. And Jess is having a freak out moment with Abby. <laughs> that, that's a great explanation. <laughs> I should write that fanfic. You, you should. <laughs> Ho, ho, ho. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Patreon. Do you love Hallmarkies podcasts, especially at Christmas? Do you enjoy the holiday previews, recaps, interviews, and bonus episodes? If the answer is yes, please consider supporting the Hallmarkies Patreon. We need your help to do what we do both during the Christmas season and all year round. But not only do you help a podcast led by strong, independent women by becoming a Patreon, you get to become a part of the Hallmarkies family. Starting at only $2 a month as a patron, you will have access to our Facebook Patreon group where we talk about the movies, shows, and more all year. We also have many monthly patron watch-alongs with guests like Lacey Chabert, Natalie Hall, Paul Campbell, Mary Lou Henner, and more, giving their behind-the-scenes details of their films. 
As a patron, you also have the chance to provide input into the podcast and even join us at different tiers. So this Christmas season, spread some cheer to the Hallmarkies Patreon and become a member today. You won't regret it. Go to patreon.com slash Hallmarkies to learn more. That's patreon.com slash Hallmarkies. It could be, it could be that. Anyway, small little detail. I thought that was so funny. You know, we're just we're just kicking off the, the episode here and already have these beautiful family moments. And one thing they did really well with this episode is that is something like that. David's there, you know, in the in the room and um the um you know, they have interactions with all the significant others that were that were kind of tender and sweet. And so it's like the family is growing. Mick said that at the very end, you know, the family is growing and you definitely get that sense. Mm. Happy to see all of them together. So, um, okay, well, let's jump in. Let's just talk couple by couple. Let's talk about all of their happily ever afters. And then um, I definitely want to talk about the wedding at the end and how everything wrapped up in that way but um while we're talking about mick and megan's engagement let's let's digest their storyline here a little bit um they're planning a wedding fast (laughs) yeah yeah i was like so how long is this supposed to be since i didn't i I make i guess i missed that i don't know no they really didn't give us a time frame okay i didn't think so i was like did i miss that okay no no, they didn't get married in tomorrow, 48 hours, 72 hours, something. Just right. Enough right. time for Sarah and Kevin to go home with the baby and then, you know, come back to the wedding with the baby and stuff like that. But um, so I thought they were they were just so cute the way they were trying to do things right. They wanted to do things right this time. Yeah, you know the the superstitions of not seeing each other the day of mm-hmm. something borrowed, something blue, something old, something new. You know that kind of was a a cute little theme throughout. Mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Any thoughts on mom and dad getting married, Casey? I I love that we incorporated Gran into this. Oh man, we missed Grand this season. I mean, obviously there are other things that were keeping her from coming. Yeah. Um, which is very understandable. You know, we want to protect Diane Ladd. Yeah. Protect her. <laughs> um, but I I really appreciated the shout out that they gave Gran and how she was the one that sent Megan a little token for the wedding. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, so sweet. Yeah. Yeah. that was that was very sweet and I liked how they both the whole episode they were sure you know they were mm-hmm. they were sure they were they were doing it she's taking time off they're gonna go travel the world mm-hmm. he's retiring which wow. and did you even anticipate that would be a part of this like he would retire I didn't really think so I just you know we just know how hard he's worked how long he's worked he has his own you know company like that's no small feat you know Mm -hmm. and so I didn't yeah I wasn't even thinking of that I wasn't even thinking like oh yeah he's gonna retire um so I was kind of like wow I was like okay um that's a big deal for him you know Mm -hmm. Um, yeah but um you know I think it's good of course he has Abby Abby is super hard worker reliable um dependable (laughs) Um, so he knows he's leaving it in. Yeah. And so, yeah. yeah. I'm sure helps. <laughs> yeah. I didn't see it coming either, but it didn't surprise me. Mm-hmm. It was one of those things where I was like, wait, whoa. Okay. Yes. You yes, know, because I, I feel like that was a really great move for Mick because the re- I mean, there's lots of reasons why he and Megan fell apart, but he was such a workaholic before and he yeah. really put his work. I don't want to say he put his work before his family, but it definitely was a high priority. And I think yeah. at times he did put it before his family. I mean, you know, as a parent, you always do the best you can. And sometimes you think that making the sacrifices are for the better of your family until you look back and you're like, Ooh, maybe I should have, you know, I should have shut down the computer at five. I should have gone to the baseball game, even if it was an hour away or just different things like that. And so I think having him retire and then having him um, and Megan get married again, it really does show a brand new chapter for him Mm -hmm. and his storyline and his relationship (laughs) with Megan. Cause now it's just the two of them 
mm-hmm. like to be really cliche two of them against the world <laughs> um and nothing's stopping him now i mean like there's no excuses for him not to spend the time with megan i mean he can he i'm sure his 401k is pretty good um so he can travel the world without any extra phone calls from work and he can spend time investing in her and all the years that they lost and his grandchildren and his children and all of the things and um you know he worked hard he really did so I I really liked all of these things tying in for his storyline to just really showcase the end of one season and the beginning of a new one for him I totally agree. I, I sat there going, oh, of course, of course he would do this. He would retire and pass it off to Abby. And I appreciated their conversation, you know, that she, as a very, very much a peer with him in business, understood like, how is this going to be for you? This is, your job really has been everything to you for a long mm-hmm. time. And he says, you know, yeah, I really regret that it has been sometimes it has been everything to me Mm -hmm. and I hope you don't make that same mistake. Mm -hmm. And so really kind of mentoring her in that way, this, you and I are like, this could be everything to you. I hope you don't make that same mistake. And he really actually spoke into Evan in that same manner when he and Evan had a one-on-one conversation, this, this episode really kind of saying, Hey, you know, life, life is short life is short and I you need to um or time flies I think that's what he said time flies you know really consider your priorities and so he really really set the two of them up I think to um to make a good step in for their mm-hmm. future but um he he learned that the hard way he yeah. really did mm-hmm. yeah. yeah I appreciated that Go ahead, Ann. Sorry. I was just going to say that was great advice that he uh-huh. took his own experience, you know, to give to them both. Um, so that's, that's good. Totally. Yeah. Totally. And that he even said like sobriety, you know, like there was a couple important things that he mentioned, retirement, marriage, sobriety. It's all, I'm going to wake up for life. I'm going to wake up and be present, you know? Um, yeah, yeah. He's in a good place. Yeah. Good place. He is. He really is. I'm, I'm so glad that, you know, because he, this season, you know, he went through so much. Um, so I'm really glad that he's in a good place and yeah. he focused on Megan, his sobriety, his grandkids, his kids. Yeah. 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 So good. Yeah. And something tells me that Mick's going to come back from touring the world with Megan and he's going to be like, Abby, you've got to hire me on per diem. (laughs) I'm sure. (laughs) Just, you know, just as like a contract worker. That's what my dad did when he retired. He was in the nursing field for 45 years plus. And he's like, I'm going to retire. He talked about retirement from the time I was a kid. Finally, he turned 65 and he's like, peace, I'm out. And then six months later, he's like, oh yeah, I'm working again. And I'm like, but you retired. What are you talking about? He's like, no, no, no. It's just per diem. It's just per diem. And he was working. He he was funny. And I, it just reminds me of something that Mick would do like that really hard worker. It's sometimes you're like, what do I do with my life right now? So, Hey, you know, ideas, Hallmark, futures, you know, (laughs) movies for Chesapeake Shores. (laughs) Well, he did something really precious too, that, um, it didn't really make sense to him his whole life. After they divorced, he kept Megan's wedding band and she, and he gave it back to her um, as her something old. Old. Something old. Mm-hmm. I think that's, because I was thinking about that and I was like, hmm. I was like, how would I feel if that was me? Right. And then, you know, I was like, you know, I think that, I think that that shows just that he, I don't know, like, why didn't he get rid of it? You know, it just shows like, I mean, you could have pawned it and gotten money. I mean, you could do anything, pass it on to somebody. I mean, you could do anything with it. Mm-hmm. And I think it just shows how he, you know, he wasn't done. He didn't, he didn't want to let it go. Yeah, right. like, There's a reason in his, you know, yeah. in his heart, in his mind that he kept it. Mm-hmm. And so if I was her, I'd be like, okay, you know, he kept it all this time. And also it's just, it's always good to remember, like, and to reflect and be like, you know, th- you know, we, it's a re- good reminder of like what happened before and how we're grateful for where we are now and we're learning from where we were. Mm-hmm. 
And that's a good reminder just to kind of have that, um, mm -hmm. to be glad you aren't in that place, but at the same time to be like, we're learning from that place. Yeah. We've learned from that place. Um, so I, I, I liked it. I, mm -hmm. I was kind of like questioned myself on what I thought about it, but then I was like, you know what? I think that's, I think that's really, you know, beautiful. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. I agree. I agree. I thought I ended up with the thought that I was actually, it was pretty romantic. It was actually a very, very romantic gesture um, to, to keep it and then give it and say, like, acknowledge you and I have done this before, but you and I are starting over and we're going to, you know, kind of like all those super superstitions that they didn't want to see each other and all that stuff. You could almost imagine them saying, oh, get rid of that thing. You know, that was yeah, that yeah, was yeah. the ring ring from a bad marriage but he's like he's like no 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 i'm taking the power out of that like here this is here it is again like you and i are in this again so <clears throat> very romantic gesture mick mm -hmm. that that was super so sweet. good yeah very very sweet okay okay what other couple should we talk about next who should we go to let's go to connor and margaret Woo! connor and margaret <laughs> Yeah, those two, we really need, we really need something like there is so much chemistry, yeah. so much spice. Like, I'm like, please give us a spin off with them, please. And then everyone can make cameos and guest appearances. It would be, mm -hmm. it would be great. Oh, but it'd be also, so like Movies with the oh. whole family, I think would be great. But I also think them with the spin off would also be oh. really great. They'd be magical. They have such a good relationship, even as frosty as they were at the mm -hmm. beginning of this episode. That was like yeah. crackling, you know. He yeah, was like, feel it. I was like, oh, no. I was like, no. <laughs> That's my favorite people, like so, you know, not hostile, but just like, yeah, I see, you know, yeah. each other, and I was just so sad. Yeah. And, Oh, yes. Oh, man. I so really quick, I read an article. It, it, I think they had interviewed Fief and I, I wish I, I saved the link to the article, but they did an interview. They said that a lot of the things in the last two to three episodes of the season, they've just packed like another season's worth into three episodes is essentially yeah. what happened. And so um, going into that and knowing that knowledge, like having to wrap everything up with Connor and Margaret, I am glad it, like all things considered I'm glad that they had their first fight because <laughs> yes. things were going really well for them and it's almost like but you can't have a perfect perfect couple mm -hmm. because yeah. uh, that's not reality but then yeah. you're like well they have to be they have to be at odds in some kind of yeah decent manner where it makes sense that's not overdone and I think this is the perfect way for them to have their first fight which was the the basically Connor steamrolled Margaret in the decision making mm -hmm. process and I think that's a really good argument to have because that can legitimate. happen legitimate like either a legitimate way. argument mm -hmm. a very real argument that could certainly easily happen in oh any, in any yeah. firm that's why i was like this yeah. is great like natural mm -hmm. you know argument and I, I love the point she made i was like girl i understand <laughs> what you're saying when she was like you know connor like i expect this at another firm mm -hmm. she's like but i don't expect this like you know, from you, like from oh. some other firm, I was like, that is so true. Like that was just such a really good valid um, mm -hmm. point, you know? And I was like, I was like, if I was there, I would be mad too. I totally understood. Mm -hmm. I thought it made sense. Um, yeah, I was totally okay with it. Mm -hmm. Like she said, they were two people, a two person law firm versus the US government. She's like, we're not just David and Goliath here. We are a bug on the windshield <laughs> of the car on the freeway. Like we're, we have no chance here. What did you do? And she, it was so good how they, they argued very well that he was like coming to her and, and telling her saying with his words, <clears throat> you know, I'm sorry, I won't do that again. I shouldn't have done that. But his actions, you know, like, she, mm -hmm. she didn't forgive him too fast. And she's like, will you? Oh, yeah. I hope, you know, mm -hmm. like, we'll see type of thing. Mm -hmm. But then she, because she's the curious and good lawyer that she is, dug into that, you know, he took the case. So she's got to do the work. And she dug in to the case. 
smart girl that she is, she finds an answer. <laughs> I love that they let her find the answer, especially mm-hmm. since every, you know, the whole argument, I was like, oh yes, yes. Give her this so she can, you know, feel empowered and, you know, <laughs> have something to bring to Connor and then they can, you know, yeah. about yeah. it. Hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. Now we didn't get a court courtroom scene. But we did get the, you know, the unearthing of the evidence and the figuring it out. And this is how she she realized it was Byron Steigers who was probably doing the um, um, the double crossing. He all the illegal activity had to go through him first. And he was the one talking to the FBI. And so she's like, you know, I think we could win this. And mm-hmm. he says, we, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> And she said, yes. You're not just totally done with me. <laughs> yeah. Didn't you love too how he said, you you might be right? And she was like, I am right. Yeah. You know? <laughs> she was like, no, 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 maybe. I am right. She is yeah. a boss lady. She's a boss. Oh, man. oh my gosh. Hallmark, please use Marisa <laughs> Krauss all the time, every movie, every show. I want to see her yeah. everywhere. She's everywhere. Wonderful. 100% agree with you on that. And okay, so we are really in tune with this show, I feel like, because one of us said that Keller was going to figure it out. And the other said that, what was the other thing predicted? Byron oh, Steigers. Byron Steigers. You said that, right? Mm-hmm. Carrie. Yep. Yeah. I, we said it. We said it. We knew we were like, okay, okay. I think we know where this is going. But it was still really fun in the discovery. It was like, oh, you know, we knew, we mm-hmm. thought, we thought that would be it. And um, as far as their relationship and their happy ending, you know, a fight, the way they argued, I think showed um, the, a solid relationship, you know, that um, their professional, their professional uh, relationship is off and running with, you know, they're probably going to go win this case and um, things things are just good. I'm actually really glad that they didn't speed things up too much for Margaret and Connor and have him like propose or, you know, something yeah. extreme. That, that would have been. been too much. Yeah. I think it was, I think it was perfect. Yeah. Me too. I do too. Again, we want a spinoff with these two. <laughs> and if you're not going to give us a spinoff, then at least give us Andrew Francis and Marisa Krauss in a movie together. Oh, yeah. wouldn't it be fun to see them play other characters even? That would yeah. be. That you would guys, be crazy. they are like, okay, let me tell, this is, let me just set the stage. Okay. We all love Hallmark here. There are certain like star couples that are on your radar. You're like, all of a sudden you see, so and so and so and so and you're like yes like oh paul campbell and kimberly susted you're like yes okay here's my thing andrew francis and marisa cross they are the paul and kim okay they're like <laughs> pascal and Kevin. they yeah. are like all of these other people that you just pair up together uh nikki deloach and andrew walker i mean marisa and andrew the this is your jam right here hallmark okay you need to use them <laughs> in your next series or whatever the case may be but y'all need to use these actors together they are dynamite yeah Yeah. everything i didn't know i ever needed in my life (laughs) yes they're so 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 good together so So really see them and you guys should put them in a movie and then fief and mark can write it and it's it'll be great gonna be great (laughs) and use that girl who plays harper too because the i okay i you know time is of the essence right i really love the scenes where harper was with um keller o'brien she's just so fun yeah 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 Yeah, get her too she can be that person exactly that was really fun that was a fun dynamic fun dynamic i loved it well i thought that they were absolutely amazing they're definitely equal equally matched definitely let the battles begin is what they said at the end <laughs> of their um or the beginning of their relationship now um so they were fantastic why don't we go and jump to um abby and evan oh i don't know i always want i want to talk about everybody <laughs> let's talk about jess and david okay jess and david david is we finally get to see the David that I feel like we know mm-hmm. in this, in this episode, 
is the David I know. Mm-hmm. He all season has just been so angry. He's been so confused. emotional, stressed hurt. out, hurt. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A lot of emotions. Yeah. So many emotions. And in this one, he's finally like, he's, he's happy. He's laughing. He's relieved. He's like, just like focused on Jess again. And he was like, just, ah, so sweet. So So sweet. Yeah. I love how he, I love how he just thanked her, you know, it's like, thanks for, you know, just being there for me and like helping me. And, you know, he's like, I know it's been like so much and yeah, you know, that's just, yeah. Having gratitude for your partner like that and like speaking it is so important. And so I just, I thought that was so I just thought it was a great thing he said because it was true <laughs> and yeah. you know it's nice for I'm no for Jess to to hear that you know appreciation so yeah yeah so so nice yeah. so he is relieved that Connor and Margaret found this evidence against Byron Steigers he said he owes them a lifetime of home-cooked meals which <laughs> I was like I will take that <laughs> that's a good that's a good fee okay Connor was all over it and so he's just like "Woo!" just you know ready to focus on Jess again which is good <laughs> because <laughs> gonna need some more focus time <laughs> Oh yeah, I did not see this one coming, you guys. Of all the I, things, I really didn't either, and I don't know yeah. why. I did, but I should have seen it coming. But I totally didn't. I was like, <laughs> "No, they snuck it in. They snuck this in. We had this whole Jess, am I going to be a good mom thing last season? Yeah, mm-hmm. that's right. So when they said, it, I was like, "That's right. I remember mm-hmm. all the way to the last season." So, so it surprised you, Casey. Oh, a hundred percent. It surprised me. You know, we went, we, we heard Jess and her fears about her, her being a good parent, good mom. And then, you know, I'm not really sure if even want children and, you know, it's okay. That's, that's okay. Um, sometimes, especially for Jess, she's gone through trauma in her life with her mom leaving her like that leaves a big impact on somebody. And so just like all these different things for Jess, it, it's very understandable. Like, how, how can I be a good mom if I never had a mom figure in my life or my mom left? What if I do the same? You know, it's just these different things. And so in my, my thought process was, you know, we we're just going to leave Jess and David in a good spot. And then we started having this conversation and then I'm like, oh, wow. Okay. This really this trial really showed just that she is a strong woman and she can do whatever her mind or wherever life takes her to. Um, And so I'm like, and then they're talking about like, okay, so you like want to start having kids like after, after the court case, after the winery, after the all things. And I'm like, Oh, okay. They're going to start trying like, you know, and that's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> trying, you know, and she's like well like how about no let's sooner you know sooner like like how about sooner <laughs> now like right now <laughs> he's like ready to go right okay right oh my, now. Oh, my, oh my gosh not the sure. window shut down that deep b and b you guys the eagle point it is shut down Oh that was so cute and so that funny he's like he was kind of like getting more and more excited and then she's like how about even sooner like whoa 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 I'm actually trying to tell you something here <laughs> and his emotion right away his tears got me like real tears I was so happy for them I was <laughs> so excited when she was like I took some tests eight of them <laughs> and they're all positive <laughs> oh they're oh, pregnant they're, oh. yeah I was I was just I was shocked I, I yeah. and yeah and he was so happy and I was just like I was like you Carrie I was like this is like the David of my heart like yeah. like mm-hmm. just 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 encourager like you know cheerleader like yeah. so you know compassionate kind um mm-hmm. you know just supportive um and so yeah I just I love that I loved it. But he was ready to get to it. He, he was ready. Yeah. <laughs> he, he, now. he was ready to go make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> now your hand getting up. I'm like, <laughs> Hello? I, <laughs> I, 
I love, I love it. I love, that was the biggest shock. I think this, uh, well, maybe this, maybe this season for me, I really, like a lot of other, of the other things I was like surprised, you know, but you can, you can kind of tell, but this one literally had me going. What? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it was just the perfect way to end for them. You know, just that things, things are going well, things are stable. They are, they were ready. You know, you just really had that sense that they were ready to now expand their family and and start a family i guess so um so happy for them they were the, just the cutest love it love jess and david always have we always will <laughs> great couple um kevin and sarah are just same just ending in such a happy place such a good place mm -hmm. with um baby mickey johns hopkins you know and just Again, I feel like we saw the Kevin that we just love in this mm -hmm. in this episode, the original Kevin who wants his family to be happy and and together, you know, he was just so happy this this whole episode. Yeah. He was. Mm -hmm. He he was. I oh, we we just love Sarah and Kevin and I feel like this season, looking back, they didn't have their big, their storyline was really the baby, but I think they had such a big storyline last year that it makes sense that this season is a little lighter for them. Sure. Um, that's, yeah, that's true. They had yeah. like a hard storyline last season. Yeah. And, and I at think the same time though, Kevin could really step up like, you know, all through Mick's um, admission of his um, drug abuse, mm -hmm. you know, Kevin really was, I mean, he just was he was concerned about Mick and the narcotics. He was concerned mm -hmm. about Sarah and her pregnancy, you know, really kind of, you could see this passion for, for being a doctor and for helping mm -hmm. people in that way really develop over the course of the season. Mm -hmm. So he just, it was, it was a very small storyline short, mm -hmm. you know, but it was important for him. Yeah. 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 He is. He's so steady. The character of Kevin has been steady throughout all six seasons here. Yeah. yeah. Um, so and he's like, he's the brother that you want, you know? Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, just like hot dad in a tie, you know, like if that's all, that's all you need from <laughs> Kevin. Mean, like, you know? give us the one more shirtless O'Brien, because I was like, wow, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen someone say, how do you like this tie? And I'm obviously I'm going to wear a shirt. I just don't want to get it dirty. <laughs> I know. That was funny. That was and then funny. they had more, you know, sexual jokes just this whole episode. I was like, oh, well, maybe I'll, you know, put it on later. <laughs> okay. That's cute. It was cute. Fun. Marriage. Cute. Marriage is fun fun that way okay <laughs> all right um yes love them all right now let's talk about brie and luke brie and luke <sighs> okay brie and luke brie o'brien and luke brie o'brien <laughs> super surprised that he you know she calls him and um he has checked himself out against doctor's orders from recovering at the from in the hospital from this gunshot room wound mm -hmm. she's like where did he go she doesn't know where he went he's not answering the phone and um she's just like oh man this i gotta find him you know she's asking about him finally he shows up at her doorstep on her porch and uh says hey sullivan has been telling me you've been asking about me sullivan the parole officer who again doing these good deeds for Luke. I think their relationship has changed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so that conversation was so important. What did you think of that conversation, Anne? Uh, I was just like, Luke, I was just, I felt sad. And, yeah. and I just felt so sad that he, um, you know, sees himself that way and mm -hmm. felt that way. And I was just like, oh, I was like, Luke, I was like, please don't break our hearts. Like, we want you and Bray to be together. And, um, you know, it, that's what it, that's what a relationship is. It's yeah. 
being together through highs and especially lows. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm just like, there's nothing wrong with you. Like yeah. you are a wonderful person. You yeah. saved somebody. You you when you went to prison, you were literally trying to protect somebody. Mm-hmm. Now you save somebody from this um, you know, this robbery at the gas station. And you know, yeah, like something this is really hard. And I guess yeah. you know, has drug or has some kind of issue. And so I'm sure like being in that kind of pain and trying to, you know, I don't know, not take pain pills or whatever he needed to do will also be hard, but it's like, Luke, like you're wonderful. Like I just, I, I don't want you to, you know, feel this way. No. Mm -hmm. And, and you, you see his journey. He was getting, he was on such an amazing trajectory. You know, he's, he's helping Mick and supporting Mick. He's, he's has this, he's running the bridge, you know, he's really, really definitely in love with Brie, even though he didn't say it. We all, we all saw it and she felt it. And he himself is like, it almost took this thing to remind him he's bad luck, you know, to remind him like to, of his, um, he just doesn't think highly of himself. I, he, has had, he's been really down on his luck and um, he doesn't trust that things are going well, you know, things, things are going to go badly. Um, so this was his turn to sabotage, his you turn know. to sabotage their relationship. That's and very true. Yeah. He yeah. had to come up. She had to be the strong one. She yeah. had to say, no, what we have is true. What we have is real. And it's like, we have a connection mm-hmm. and um, it was probably good for someone else to sabotage something that she <laughs> had to realize that she loved so much. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. I will say this is the couple, or this is the scene I was talking about in the very beginning of our episode. Amelia Uluru literally crushed it with this scene. Yeah. Just the emotional heaviness of everything, the heartbreak. I, you know, again, looking back through the last six seasons, I feel like her character, the character of Brie, has always been a little, like, she's been kind of, like, up and down, up and down, up and down, but we've never seen a, an emotional range from her. Yeah. Um, And I think that this was, this is perfect for Amelia to showcase, again, like, yeah. what she can do as an actor for mm-hmm. these very emotional situations. And I really like that. I like that we were able to see that. I, w- I like that we w- were able to see her passion in it. Mm-hmm. And like, and as as Brie too, because, you know, Brie has been the sabotager of the relationships. And so um, usually it's been a, for her, it's like, okay, I guess we're done. And like, she just goes, but this time, like her heart was truly, truly in it. Like she yeah. loves Luke and for him to do this to her. I yeah. mean, just the weight of that, it was so beautifully done yeah um and both I mean even Stephen Hussar like you can see the tears welling up in his eyes and I was like oh my goodness I know he was trying to be strong you know what I really loved I thought it was such an olive branch such a little gracious thing to say for her to say you know will you at least come to the wedding you know I think you owe Mick that much because it, she knew he wasn't just in yes he's in an important relationship with her but he she, he had become part of the family, especially someone very important to Mick. Mm -hmm. And so her acknowledging kind of very unselfishly, you need to be there for someone else and put herself aside. You know, can't you imagine old Brie being like, don't ever, I don't ever want to see you again. Don't even think about coming to the wedding, you know, kind of just like putting herself Mm -hmm. first a little bit that Mm -hmm. way. She Mm -hmm. really put herself aside, said, you have to you have to support my dad. You have to support Mick. Would you mm-hmm. at least come to the wedding? And I think in a way, because the next time we see him, he is at the wedding, even after he said, I can't, I can't mm-hmm. come to the wedding. Cause that would be, that would be me coming back to you and back mm-hmm. to your family, you know? Yeah. I, but I think that she needed to still extend that invitation for him to realize I, I can't push them away. I can't mm-hmm. push them. Like, I'm a part of this family. I'm mm-hmm. a part of, I want to be a part of her life. And because it was the, the whole family who was wanting him in, you know, wanting to accept him. Yeah. Um, we saw that just through Mick, I guess. But 
when he comes to the wedding, I was like, oh, okay, Luke is a man of his word. I know what this means. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's yeah I, liked, I liked what he said to her. Yeah. I can't remember exactly what he said, but um, I liked what he said. You know, he's just like, you know, I want to, like, I want to be like in this, like with you. Mm-hmm. you know? and, and, and I'm just, I think we miss that as human beings like that's what a relationship isn't just about like being happy and having fun it's really just the mundane and the the highs and lows of life I mean that's what it is um you know just your best friend somebody you want to be there want to get annoyed at every day and want to want to cheer you on and want to um comfort you and want to encourage you yeah and that's going to be good times and it's going to be not so good times and that's just what life is so I really like just how he kind of said like I want to I want us to be in this together yeah I, I, I I like that I like that too. When I saw him there, I was like, oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and he needed to be at a place where he was able to choose something good for himself. And he saw that Brie is good for him. The O'Briens mm-hmm. are good for him. And he needed to say, I deserve something good like this. Yeah. And he got there. And mm-hmm. I was really happy about that. That was cool. Cool to see. Yeah. Yay, Luke and Bree. They worked it out. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Where she was the strong one. Oh, I just loved it. I thought that was awesome. Um, okay, now let's talk about Abby and Evan. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we've covered all the rest of them, right? There's <laughs> so many. So many. But the but we started out. That was the huge question starting out season six. Who did Abby call? what you know we still had team j team evan who who are we rooting for here who is her happily mm-hmm. ever after mm-hmm. and um which was so cool so funny how um they brought that back around later when jess says team evan so anyway okay anyway I don't know. We have we have Mandrake who was fired still, but Abby loved that she offered him a job. Yes. Yes. You cannot. You have to have Mandrake. So Mandrake has to be around. Okay. He's wonderful. I love him. I'm so glad that, you know, that Abby, she really cares about him. Cause I mean, he's like always around. Like mm-hmm. you're basically ignoring him if you never talk to him, which is rude. Really? And Abby's not like that. So she always like offers him cookies and just talks to him <laughs> when Evan's running off doing, you know, avoiding situations. Really? I love how kind of Abby just kind of, you know, she's just kind of like, well, you can, you know, you can come work with work for me. You know. Well, she's savvy businesswoman. She knows a good thing when she sees it. And she's mm-hmm. like, if he's foolish enough to let you go, then I need you. You're so <laughs> capable. <laughs> You're my right hand man, which was so cute to see. Um, you know, she said, did you hire Mandrake back or did you talk to Mandrake? And he's like, Evan says, uh, yeah, well, you know, he's kind of deciding I mean, like <laughs> working for you or working for me, basically, is what that he That was funny. I like that. <laughs> I did do, yeah. Well, we had just enough time in this last episode to get peel an- yet another layer, that last little layer to Evan and his backstory. Yes. Yes. That, that can't that was a curveball. I I didn't see that coming at all. Yeah. <laughs> like at all um I was like wow that's a lot of that's a lot of trauma to go through in one you know I mean Mm -hmm. five hour period four however long I mean from that to you know the accident I mean oh my god yeah yeah so yeah so the from the abusive mom's boyfriend up uh, like that's what drove the accident to the accident yeah yeah what led to the accident yeah that took his mom Mm -hmm. yes that was that was another one that was like okay we've just now fit like that was the final piece to the the evan puzzle yeah Mm -hmm. like yeah yeah. for abby too for abby too you know she didn't know this yeah 
and that's I mean that's like a huge trauma in his life yeah that she needs to know and that you know mm-hmm. and just a piece that we need to know about his character and especially yeah. you know, you're gonna propose to somebody spend the rest of your life with somebody you want to know you know yeah. um, you know mm-hmm. the hardest thing that they've been through um, yeah you knew you know about the accident and what happened and, uh, yeah he just has these a couple just very key moments in this um, episode for him. You know, he finally opens up fully to Abby and and to himself. He, mm-hmm. he finally gets it out. You get the sense that this is kind of like not a lot of people know this. Mm-hmm. Finally opens up to Abby. He has this great conversation with his um, biological father, John Ortberg. John, his name. <laughs> yeah. You're John, John Ortberg. Ortberg. <laughs> You're John. Osterberg. John Osterberg. Osterberg. Yes, that's right. Osterberg. And um, he, they have a, a cute, they're, they're a lot more alike than they thought. Yeah. Yes. Yes. yes Love the yes, tiny yes, yes. things. And even if, you know, you flip over your kayak, <laughs> just the joy of trying something new. I was like, oh yeah. 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 Yes. And the mannerisms, the mannerisms of the actor who played John was so perfect yes I was like okay this man did his homework (laughs) yeah that's to like the mimic the exact intonation as Robert Buckley's Evan so he's matching the intonation even the gestures even like even the way that Evan will just zone like he'll like squirrel to a totally different topic yeah you know you're in the middle of this conversation and you know you're like okay, I guess we're talking about kayaking now. Like, but it was <laughs> so good. I loved it. Even the way, even their clothes, you know, kind of just their simple, simple clothes that they wore, just that, just a little light jacket type of thing. And it, I liked the fact that um, John never had, he had a happy marriage, but he never had had kids before either. And so he's not the only vulnerable one in this in this new relationship Mm -hmm. he's never had a son before evan's never had a dad before they're a little more alike than they thought i mean i can just see them i can see them doing well Mm -hmm. they're they're gonna do okay and yeah so because i just assumed you know that's usually how it is you know the person comes from florida i'm like okay so he was in florida right Um, i'm sure he has like a wife and kids back there and it's like no like his wife died and he doesn't have kids like he yeah. could totally move there and so you know, and you know and then discover lots of new things chesapeake shores and yeah. you know get, have a relationship with his son that he just learned about because he doesn't even have like any other you know fan or yeah. you know immediate immediate family um yeah in so florida true. so i mean yeah yeah no i i loved that and that so, so the conversation with Abby, the conversation with John, his biological dad, the conversation with this, with Mick, who really challenges him on, um, you know, time flies and don't be a workaholic, basically, you know, is, is what he's saying. And then he's ready. He's ready to buy another house. on <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is a beautiful house. Oh, I know. Beautiful. Wow, on the water. And you got the yes, please. Kitchen. This living room is gorgeous. I was like, wow. <laughs> oh, Vancouver Island. Oh my gosh. So, so, so wow. beautiful. Today's episode of the podcast is sponsored by W Rated, the podcast where we willingly watch the world's worst rated movies. Join me, Daisy. And me, Claire, as we break down the IMDb Bottom 100, choosing a different film from the list every episode. We take a deep dive into the plot, production, release and reviews, usually with a special guest to uncover if these films are truly as bad as everyone says they are. You can find us on Spotify, Apple, Good Pods and anywhere else you find your podcasts. So, so Casey, what did you think about that? Did you anticipate? I mean, yes, because we saw the preview. I was just saying, well, I'm single, at least not part every of the single preview. thing. Because <laughs> that's I, when I turned it off. <laughs> who made this preview? Who made this preview? Let's find out. I, 
okay had i not seen the preview i probably would have seen it coming just because chesapeake shores has been a story from abby's point of view yeah it started off with abby so it's gonna end with abby so i would assume that she would get her happy happily ever after yes i i loved that it was simple I love that the proposal was just the two of them in their gorgeous new house. I love that it was just, you know, it was very perfect. You know, it wasn't flashy. And I think this shows the evolution of Evan Kincaid again. I think it just shows how, you know, he really cherishes this woman and how she feels about different things and he's really Mm -hmm. scaling learning how to scale things back and learning how to just keep it simple we don't need all the fireworks and the mariachi bands and the flautists and the thousand dollar bottles of champagne and all the things (laughs) and I really appreciated that I loved I loved it I thought it was so sweet and I also love their conversation about the house like you know, oh, you know, Kate, Carrie and Caitlin will have a room and Gran when she visits. <laughs> what about Mandrake? Oh, he has an apartment above the garage. <laughs> yeah, I love of course. That. Like He thought about everything. And that says a lot too. And uh, he was like, yeah, I, I, I thought, you know, maybe I would get like a live so-and-so to play another room. But, you know, I figured, you know, better not to do that. Just, you know, have some music. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was that was perfect you can see he's really settled into himself he doesn't feel like he has to be this impressive in your face big you know go big or go home he is just he just wants to be and that's what he said he wants to learn just how to be but he is already Mm -hmm. he's just he's setting up for a good future he loves her girls he's thinking about he's very he's thinking family now and mandrake's part of that family um he's just such such at a good place mm-hmm. i thought yeah <clears throat> and you know now that we know all of evan's story it kind of makes you wonder like okay did the accident so all the things that happened with his mom she had multiple boyfriends they weren't all the greatest so he's like shutting off she's shutting himself off to people like he keeps the circles very close to him probably because of all of that and then having you know been abused by the mother's boyfriend the mom taking them off for a drive like they got out of there mom get like they get in an accident that's even more like trauma on him so it's almost like you have to think about it from his perspective too like did all of these things cause him to be such a closed off workaholic to become like this crazy billionaire who's very eccentric and very like, well, I guess you only live once because I mean, my mom didn't really get that chance. And so, you know, just being able to see the layers through Evan, because I will say like when they brought on a billionaire after having, after Trace Riley left the show, I was yeah. like, what? I don't, I don't get it, but okay, here for this. It's Robert Buckley. I mean, can't go wrong with Mr. <laughs> Buckley here. But, you know, I, I like how we started from this very grand, obscure person. And we just kind of like, we really like peeled off the layers. We really Mm -hmm. saw who Evan is, um, and his heart. And I think Chesapeake Shores does magic to people. I think it just breaks down those barriers, um, so that they can just truly enjoy life and just live and love the people that they're they're with and um just you know just take it all in so yes that we saw it happen to everyone Jess um mm-hmm. Abby whenever you know Abby came back and it happened to Abby it happened to you know David he left that big that mm-hmm. big life in Boston and came and just really found himself in Chesapeake mm-hmm. Shores um Bree settled down Luke settled down I mean like mm-hmm. Connor you know comes back and opens mm-hmm. I mean, you are so right. There's something magical about Chesapeake Shores. It really, really just has that effect on people that maybe because it's a family and we see that 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 is Mm -hmm. one of the most important things that we have in life. One of our greatest gifts is family. But um, yeah, they really, really showcase that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With Evan too, you know? Yes. Yes. And he said that he said, you know, family, your family is so important to mm-hmm. me. And um, I thought that was super, super, yes. super sweet. 
And as a spinoff, hashtag Team Juicebox J, he got his he got his girl. <laughs> we know he did. Juicebox J is fine. Upstanding citizen in Chesapeake Shores, great teacher award, best teacher award. Yeah, never yes. <laughs> best week, or at least on the show, but he's still up there. Yes. Yeah. No, Not- I. I have been one over to Team Evan, you guys. There you go. Gotta say it. Hey. Hi. Um, shout out to the hairstylist. Um, I love it when they do, I call it um, Robert's fluffy hot hair. I love it when they make it big like that. I like that. <laughs> That's more how it was on One Tree Hill. Um, so I like it when it's like that. Oh, oh so fun. I just noticed specifically it was a lot more like. <laughs> whatever yes it, it was it was the it wasn't color, like, all like like down yes. it's like yeah and I, I like it when it's like that. so cute he was so cute so cute. well you know what I've got to say something about Abby too here because she you know her Evan's not the only thing about her you know obviously oh, yeah. we, we really are happy about um who she ends up with and how and why and he fits in so well with the family and Chesapeake Shores and good match for her but one thing that really impressed me about her this whole season season six and then especially this last episode Abby was so settled mm-hmm. she knew who she was she knew who she loved she knew you know her future's planned out here for her. She's taking over this company. She's ready. Um, she is so at ease. She felt so at ease to me that um, she was in a place to really help the people that she loved the most find their ease as well, you know, mm-hmm. find their road as well. And that was Evan. She was very patient with him, but mm-hmm. she loved him. And she already told him that she loved him, you know? Um, so I just thought this episode was so beautiful for her because life has just been so crazy Mm -hmm. so busy so crazy so up and down with her love life so up and down with her you know girls a little bit and um the business but she was so at peace and at ease this episode Mm -hmm. um it was cool it was cool Mm -hmm. to see yeah yes she really was Mm -hmm. she's in the right place (laughs) she really was Yes, she Finally. settled. Finally, <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff going on in the last season three and four. Woo! I know. Whoa. I know. But to find that person that she said, "I love you" and "I like you," and I think we all, we yeah. all were in that place. Where we were like, "We, we do too, Abby. We love him and we like him." I know. It was funny how she literally said that, but I guess. I guess that was a joke they had, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was, that was a joke before. That was that was a reference to something else, but we did not feel that about Trace necessarily. He was very polarizing character. We some people loved him, some people <laughs> did not. Ooh, man. Evan, <laughs> Evan, you find yourself loving him and mm-hmm. liking him, you know, just like yeah. Him. Yeah. And I will I will say, I have to say it again. I mean, the act Jesse Metcalf made a choice to leave the show. I mean, for reasons that nobody knows. You can speculate all day long, but nobody really knows unless you are Jesse Metcalf or you work on the Chesapeake Shores cast. I know how hard it is for those of you who are book purists, because in the book series from Cheryl Woods, it is Trace and Abby. That's endgame. Yeah. You have, I mean, in this industry, I mean, when you're making a TV series and your lead quits for reasons only known to those working, you have to, you have to do what works. I mean, yeah. I am a book purist myself. I, I cannot stand it when a book really, or a series deviates completely from the book. Anne of Green Gables and Anne with an E, perfect example. Like Anne of Green Gables, the third movie, also another perfect example, because I am a book purist. I have to say though, you have to put watching this series you have to put that aside and you have to just watch it for what it is because I think they did a really great job incorporating a new character making him different enough than Trace so that you're not like oh this is just another this is a cop-out this is a copycat replacement 
yeah trace sure. yeah exactly trace replacement um and just watch it for what it is just you know <clears throat> know that the books are completely separate and know that the this the last half of the series is also completely separate and just give it a try um because i know that's a lot of people's hang-ups it was you know jesse metcalf left, left the show well the books were abby and trace so how can we have another person but um i would say you know just just try it and you might be surprised especially if you do just you really have to just set the books aside and just watch it for what it is because it really is good storytelling I mean they give the actors a lot to work with these last two seasons I mean in my personal opinion um and they really showcased that and they really elevated the show yeah um to something even greater than I had even ever expected so just think of it as an alternate universe like an alternate reality like the like just think of it as like abby's choose your own adventure we'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast it's the hallmarkies merch store are you looking for that perfect gift for the postable hardy or hallmarky in your life what about getting that t-shirt or hoodie that will help you stand out at your next holiday party now is the time to check out the hallmarkies merch store full of festive designs by artists like jessica miller Carry from Walmart Comics, and more. You can even have more than just shirts, but totes, cell phone cases, notebooks, mugs, and more. And it isn't just Hallmark. We have designs for Anna Green Gables, Man from Snowy River, The Nanny, and more. Every purchase at the merch store goes to help support the podcast and allows us to make the great content you know and love. There are frequent sales, so go to tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies or see the link in the description. That's tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies. It was really smart, like you said, Casey, how they made them so different. And I think that really helped, at least for me. I like that they made Trace and um, Evan's character really different. Um, you know, mm-hmm. it was kind of, and it kind of took the show in a different direction, you know? They had to. Yeah. Because yeah, Evan was more like with the family and Trace was more isolated from the family. Like they didn't have a lot of scenes together. And so mm-hmm. it kind of changed the whole show in a way because the characters were so different. Um, which You're I right. the way it went, the way, you know, the way that it ended up going. I, I really like that. So. You're so right. That's awesome. I totally agree because Trace was so isolated from the family yeah, you didn't get those family moments, those togetherness, the which we really got with Evan, you know, as he started yeah. to be incorporated into the family more. And um, I love that. Let's talk about these last, they were probably the last maybe 15 minutes of the whole episode. It was this beautiful wedding, this wedding that happens at the B&B for a $100 family rate. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, which is so cute. And the girls walk mom down the aisle basically as um, well, like in front of her, but as her bridesmaids, the boys come around dad as his groomsmen. And, and just, Carrie and Caitlin are the flower girls. And Carrie and Caitlin are the flower girls. You just get this like they're they're together. This is the ultimate parent trap. And it took six seasons, but it's the <laughs> ultimate parent trap. You know, get our divorced parents back together again. And so beautiful. Barbara Niven. I mean, wow. She is so stunning. I mean, I, stunning. I mean, she's always stunning, like in every Hallmark movie she does. But she looked so amazing. Mm-hmm. They did a great job with her hair and her jewelry. And she just, she looked in love and happy and excited. And I mean, that was her acting. But, um, you know, she just, you know, you could feel, I could feel like, oh, this is my ch- second chance. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh, I can't wait. Oh, mm-hmm. this is going to be great. Like, I, like, that was when I cried. Like, I'm getting teary-eyed now. I was thinking about it. Like when she was walking down the aisle and they did said their vows, I, I started to tear up. I was like, oh my gosh, like I, this, this is so beautiful. Like a rekindling of this is so, so beautiful. Um, mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah. I do think that they had, they said some really beautiful things to each other during their vows. They didn't really vow anything to each other, but they just mm-hmm. spoke words of like life and, and love over mm-hmm. there 
over each other. And um, that was really, really precious. I thought that they, <laughs> I don't know. I thought that they were, it was the perfect short wedding. Mm -hmm. The shortest little ceremony. Let's get to the party. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> yeah, I love it's it. TV. You're not going to have any like special music or anything, but this is a sweet little, sweet little moment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it you also caught a glimpse of some cameos in there. We mm -hmm. did. We sure mm -hmm. did. I snapped a photo and <laughs> sent it over to you, Casey. We saw the head writer himself, Thief Sutton, in the um, congregation or the as on the guest list there, yes. right next yeah. to me. That was so funny. Yeah. And the producer was the um, the officiant. The officiant. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Dan Paulson. So yeah, good. That was, that was good. I bet that was fun for them to like actually mm -hmm. be on the other side of the screen. Yeah. 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 Definitely. I love that. Um, we have this great iconic ending after the wedding. Everyone's sitting around the, the campfire right behind or right to the side of their the home on Chesapeake shores and they're happy, they're toasting, they're saying these great things, they're teasing each other. I mean, it was so O'Brien-esque. Yeah. It was exactly what I wanted from this episode and how to end it. I was like, this is perfect, mm -hmm. just yeah. perfect. Yeah. And I got my montage. Yes. Oh, I just love a flashback montage. I mean, I know it's like the cheesiest thing. I don't care. Oh. I want it every time. <laughs> every series finale. I always love it. Because you're just reminded of how much growth there was, just how mm -hmm. many great moments, and just how much love and care and family. Mm -hmm. And oh, and you saw Diane Latt. I mean, um, you know. Yes. Uh, and Grand. Grand. And, um, you know, she's yeah I just love I love I that know. and I loved how the song they used for the montage was a slower song of home mm -hmm. and I'm I like first so good it was so perfect I also want to know who who did the cover for it I would like to also add that to the Chesapeake Shores playlist on Spotify oh, that's a good idea um but I loved how it was the perfect the the music was perfect for the ending because it was like yeah we're all home yeah we're coming home because in the beginning season one episode when everybody's coming home yeah mm -hmm. everybody's like coming from different places to go yeah. home because Grin gets sick and now it's like and that's like you know the upbeat like okay we're going home yeah okay and now we're ending it and it's like that slower more nostalgic sweet, sweet yeah. like let's take a look back at the journey this yes life. that was that was beautiful and so necessary and something I didn't know that I needed or or wanted until it was happening and I was like thank you thank <laughs> you I wanted to see these moments of by season by season basically I mean I, I have to go back and look but um just these that's where they came together that's where they acknowledged we are important to each other we got to figure something out or you know, let's celebrate each other. And ah, that was so, so beautiful. And what they did really well here, I thought in this last scene is that they gave us that little glimpse, you know, we know Jess and David were pregnant, but the O'Briens didn't know. Mm -hmm. We know, you know, <laughs> Abby and Evan were engaged, but the O'Briens didn't know. And so they had, the, each person had their last kind of say, mm -hmm. you know, their last little line and their last little say. And, um, it was such just such a happy moment and mm -hmm. even the significant others were acknowledged and like you know there's papers to sign if you want to be a part of this family <laughs> Luke <laughs> Margaret you know <laughs> yeah that was yeah. sweet yeah. yeah that they got to acknowledge them you know specifically mm -hmm. um you know Margaret and um Luke um so yes they're just in a newer relationship not you know engaged or anything yet I thought that was sweet they oh so good but they also said something about that yeah 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 how about um mick? mick tearing up i know okay that was what got me all like misty and i was like 
Yes. I know. I, I agree so with better. you. Whenever he like gets emotional or like is like tearing up, it just makes me. I just, I, I mean, I was like, didn't bubble over, but like my eyes were getting glassy and I was like, oh, <laughs> not again. I know. I just cried at his wedding and now uh, here I am about to cry. Yeah. I want to know is this, I want to know if this was the last scene they shot. Mm. I would love to know that. Or was it shot like, or was the wedding the last scene they shot? I would love to just know like the dynamics there because I feel like. I mean, it had to have been one of at least one of the last few scenes shot just because when each of them are giving their speeches, it was it felt personal to me. Mm-hmm. It didn't feel like actors just spitting out words on a page because they had to. It, it really did feel personal, like <clears throat> each person. Um, so, you know, when Mick gave his speech, like it was personal for treat, you know, it was like his last literally his last speech for the show to the family and like well, even you are family. There. Yeah, yeah. We're able to uh, acknowledge like this has been a really hard year for him. You know, it started out with his heart attack and mm-hmm. it's, and even him. Yeah. Just being able to just kind of really personalize it mm-hmm. and say, this is the journey I was on this year and you guys were with me. Yeah. Um, was really precious. Yeah. And I meant actor wise as an actor, it like, it felt personal for me, like from the actor standpoint, like, you know, like not just from the character, but from like the actor, like the actors are giving their final speeches. That would be good to know. When was it the final? Was it the actually final, the final shoot? Mm -hmm. Um, You almost think it was because of the Sunday afternoon and week you know promo that they were running that said hey chessies you know watch us watch the season finale tonight everyone's in their wedding clothes oh you're right yeah i mean it makes sense and it was was it like dusk Mm -hmm. Dusk. Uh, and then the you know the wedding was so i mean i mean they could shoot it the day before then do the wedding the afternoon i mean yeah yeah kinds of crazy stuff but it would be interesting to know so yeah so RP, good. listening yeah. let us know was this really <laughs> the last scene they're saying goodbye to all their castmates co-stars so nice. crap, literally um, yeah, i that. took a i took a picture of the <laughs> took a picture of the last scene with oh. them all together and then it was like the chesapeake shores in the background and i'm like I don't know what I'm going to do with this picture, but I I, <laughs> I can't resist do taking it. I have to I screenshot it. on my phone. You know. Oh, yeah. So yeah. And each, I mean, each speech was so perfect for the character and for the actor. I mean, yeah. all, everybody was tearing up. Yes. I mean, even Kevin a little bit was like, you know, I don't think I can really do this. I'm just going to make a joke and sit down. <laughs> That was perfect. <laughs> Cheers. Well, that's Cheers. What I mean. well, that was what I was meaning where, you know, Kevin is like, he was so happy this episode. And it was almost like he's just happiest when everyone around him, it, when his family's around him and they're happy and things are going well, he is able to like, ah, like loosen up, crack a few jokes, you know, just be yeah. the brother. Yeah. Be the fun big brother. Yeah. So, uh, well, it's, well, we hope that some way, somehow we will see, you know, a couple of Chesapeake Shores, you know, movies. Yeah. Or we keep saying you should put Margaret and Connor in a spinoff. Uh, <laughs> be really great. Or please put them in a movie. But um, yeah, it was, it was a good, it was a good finale. Mm-hmm. It was. It was. It was a good finale. I don't think it could have been any less. I would have been disappointed. Any more, I would have been completely overwhelmed. You know, to squeak to do anything else. This was just like I said. They they set the right tone, hit the right chord. Like they they just knocked this out of the park and makes me want to go back and watch. Yeah. If not all of them again. <laughs> at least our favorite seasons five and six <laughs> and <laughs> makes me want to go back and, and watch some of those, just kind of relive those awesome, fun moments. And um, this was just a good season. 
it was it was very good season mm-hmm. very very mm-hmm. well done lots of ground covered lots of character growth lots of relational growth lots mm-hmm. of i mean it's just so much packed mm-hmm. in it. like i just wow. yeah 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 i don't think it's i don't think it's an odd thing to hope for movies or any any other something with Chesapeake Shores like you said Casey they've done that before when there's a a, especially a fan base that really wants it and really Mm -hmm. follows and um, I think they were trending on on Twitter and had had great numbers all season Mm -hmm. Um, very very consistent solid numbers too I mean usually series tend they tend to start off high and then they just dip and they just keep going down this one like when i was checking the ratings it was very consistent in the last two it increased i'm sure when i check tomorrow i'm sure it'll be even higher um yeah maybe than last week it's like 1.5 or four or five or something Mm -hmm. yeah Um, it's like 1.3 like yeah like the whole almost the whole season i mean like very consistent very consistent yeah very and i hope it's something that they're very very proud of very pleased with it seems like it it seems like everyone was very proud of their work on yeah. just chores really really mm-hmm. finishing on a high note is a wonderful thing in this mm-hmm. business <laughs> yeah yes yes finish yeah. on a high note leave them wanting more yes yes and i think too i think the last two seasons also really showcased I, you know i'm gonna say it again they really showcased the actors um for like it, it did take me a little bit by surprise where like mixed storyline was really heavy but if you think about it, the rest of the season was not really felt fo- like we never really got anything from mixed storyline until now. And I think with when you have somebody who is extraordinary, such as Treat Williams, who is a legend in the acting world, I mean, you have to give him something yeah. to work with. And I think they finally gave him something that he can really just showcase himself and like he's treat Williams. Like you don't just write treat Williams into like a side role and just be like, okay, you're going to be a dad. Okay. Like okay. <laughs> you're gonna be a workaholic dad. And we're just gonna, you know, send you off. You'll just show up here and there. I mean, they really built him up like season five. I think they really built his story and then they gave him a really good solid story for, <laughs> for this. And he does, you know, he honestly deserves that. Yeah. Um, being who he is. Um, and then all, all the rest of the actors too, um, you know, just being able to showcase even the girls, like we had Caitlin and Carrie and their little storylines, which is, you know, that's great for them as they're budding um, actors and becoming young adults and everything. And we kind of watch them grow up through the years. And you have um, like Andrew Francis and his character. I mean, you really saw the dynamic growth in him starting off with like him and his terrible attitude from season one and just how he grows and how he matures and how he feels becomes more confident and you have Jess who is also just like this very scared and flighty kind of girl and you just kind of see her evolve and you see her become a really strong and confident woman as you know five and six progress with her and her relationship with David um and then with Brie um you know I think that Brie's always been an interesting character for like from my point of view because she is the artist she's the writer you know, she's also middle. And so I think, you know, for a little bit there in the series, she was almost like Jan Brady (laughs) in a sense where she was like, we focused so much on Jess and David and the stolen boyfriend. Cause I mean, we thought David was going to end up with Brie, but it's all good. And then we have Abby and all her relationship troubles. And then you have Brie who's like stuck in the middle because, you know, and I think that this, you know, this, especially this last um, episode really show like let Amelia showcase what she can do on an emotional range I mean yeah because through the series it was just like very like consistent and then you know Megan Ori is amazing as always and I think um for Abby it just let her relax Abby was able to relax for once I mean yeah. it was always so much angst and so much frustration with Abby and all her, yeah. like, her relationship trouble and now you know, we have Evan who's completely different and who challenges her in a completely different way, which causes her to be like, I know they like really mesh really well. And so, um, yeah, I mean, like looking back through the entire series, I mean, it ended, they really ended on a high note. I think they just, they gave every character a really good, um, arc 
And I think they also gave the actors really good material to work with. Um, and, you know, I think that's why, I think that's why a lot of us are wanting some more Chesapeake Shores, you know? Um, right. And that's, that's, that's it, amazing. It's really why we've had a, such, so consistently been interested and had so much fun recapping these shows, mm-hmm. honestly. It's why the three of us, we could analyze these shows to death, but really because we enjoy them. We, we love them. They're interesting. These stories are, are so, so good. And we've had tons of fun on Chesapeake Chats, just recapping, which has led to connections with, you know, the writers and um, a, a chance to interview some of the actors and Andrew Francis and Marisa Krause specifically. And, you know, Hopefully it'll open doors for um for a little bit more and hopefully a little bit more Chesapeake chats coming at at you. You know, if if people have um listened to this and really enjoyed it as well. But um it's fun to have a show you like. It's fun to have a show you connect with mm. people on. And um, you know, life life is fun. And so we just we've been really happy to do this. It's just been really, really great. I know. I'm going to miss recapping the shores with you guys. <laughs> no, I know. It's going to be sad. We won't, you know, know. be a time to be like this. Well, unless we get some bang, then we'll be very excited to return. Yes. Yes. We we will. <laughs> oh, well, hopefully this won't be the last you hear from us on Chesapeake Chats, but definitely, definitely watch the show. Go back in the Hallmarkies archives and watch our recaps and enjoy these with us. There are other people who are recapping Chesapeake Shores as well, who are interested in Chesapeake Shores that um, we say go for it, you know, listen and enjoy what they say also about um, Chesapeake Shores and everything that hallmark this hallmark series has brought you um girls it's been fun <laughs> it's been. i'm really sad i like yeah talking with you guys no. have to, you know get together and talk about uh, something else sometime something else. <laughs> something else to say yes well, well, we can have, you know, a Chesapeake Shores Thanksgiving movie that I've been pitching for yeah, years. Yeah, yeah, we should do that. That's a perfect family for a good Thanksgiving, you know, kind right. of some right. you know, crazy stuff going on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I mean, we, we could try and pitch more ideas. I mean, like, like you really need some ideas for more Chesapeake Shores. You mean? <laughs> We could be, we'll pitch the ideas and be your biggest fans. How about that? That'll be, <laughs> that's what we'll do. But Casey and Anne, where can people find you on social media? You can find me on Instagram and on Twitter at Casey underscore underscore Simpson. Mm-hmm. And you can find me at AW Scott 21 on Twitter and Instagram. And come on over to Instagram to find me at Hallmark Comics. That's Hallmark underscore comics. Uh, sometimes I'm not super active on my, with my comics anymore, but I am on there to interact with all these Hallmark awesomeness that is uh, all over Instagram. So um, who knows? Maybe I'll pick up the comic strip again. At some I point. think you should. Now you should do Chesapeake Shores comics. I know. I, mean. yeah, I, know. I thought about it. I'm like, <laughs> What should I do about Chesapeake Shores? So um, anyway, we uh, have loved doing this with you all. Thank you so much for listening to our recaps. Thank you for um, leaving comments. And um, that just really adds to our enjoyment of, of the show as well, that we do here on the chats and uh, follow Hallmarkies podcast all over social media so you don't miss any other great content we cover. Um, we cover everything on Hallmark Channel and heading into the Christmas season. We are here for you. If you ever wonder if anyone is here for you, Hallmarkies covers everything. <laughs> everything <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> it's the biggest part of our whole year. So we will have all the previews, all the recaps, all everything, the things, everything, everything. But definitely thank you to everyone who was involved in the Chesapeake Shores project and uh, for bringing us such a great quality show um, that has been so much fun. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, everyone, we will see you later. Thanks for joining us. Bye. 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 Bye.